Guys, if you like what I do here on Toy Gander, be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe. I got tons of videos out there like this. Now let's open up minifig number one. This is Dormammu, and I'm not an expert in his comic book history, but I just know that this character is super strong. He's like on the same level as Galactus or Thanos or somewhere within that realm. As far as the character represented in Lego form, I think it's done very nicely. I like the fact that they used... This is Ghost Rider's hairpiece. Oh, this is a tight fit here. I don't know if I can separate them. Like, almost glued on now. But uh, the, the face piece kind of looks like a pumpkin. It, it, it almost just looks like the pumpkin piece that was used with Hobgoblin, I believe. And instead of using a solid orange, they use a translucent orange. But it does pass. I mean, it looks just like the character is supposed to look, at least within the comic book realm. I like the shoulder guards right here. This is a very commonly used piece. Um, it fits very well with this character. The overall print on the front looks very good. A lot of detail. I'm pretty impressed with this. Looking at the back, it's a little bit of a cop out. Just seems like uh, like they use the front print on the torso and just, you know, put it on the back. One thing that I thought was really weird, is they included like this Tommy gun. Now I'm not an expert in this character, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't need a Tommy gun. <laughs> Overall, great design and great build. Minifig number two. This is Captain America, but a female Captain America. It's just a regular gender swap. And to be honest, I'm not very impressed with this character. The minifigure as a whole doesn't really interest me. And even like the quality on it is pretty bad. I was trying to get like this extra like piece of plastic that's stuck on the hairpiece. It's just stuck on there and it's not like coming off. The overall feels very cheap. Same thing with the shield. It really stands out as a real cheap piece of plastic. And the printing on the arms is poor. The whole thing just, it, it lacks effort. The one thing I will say I was impressed with, those are dual molded legs, which you typically don't see with these knockoffs. But other than that, this, this figure is total garbage. This next character is from Minifig Madness. You guys have to check out his website. He has created a bunch of different characters, some of them which I've reviewed in the past. They're just, they're great looking figures, and the big difference between them and a lot of the other ones that are out there, these custom figures are printed on actual Lego pieces. It makes all the difference and just the quality is a lot better. So let's go ahead and open up the Atom. This very accurately represents the original Adam in Lego form. He did a great job translating that. It's a simple design, but this is exactly what the original comic book character looked like. Now, looking at the face print, one thing that's hard to do is to print light colors on darker Lego pieces. And he did a very nice job with the head print here. Shows up very bright and actually looks almost like an official Lego. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there is a Adam symbol right on the top of his forehead, as well as on the belt. Very, very finely detailed printed, but shows up very nicely. Overall, a great design and great print. Minifigure number four. The design choices for Captain Punisher are absolutely fantastic. I love all the intricate details within this character. Now, if you know anything about Captain Punisher within the comic book timeline, at some point, Captain America dies. Frank Castle has to take over as the character. He does everything that Captain America does, but in Punisher fashion. And if you know what that means, none of it was rated G. Now, looking at the design choices for this character, looking at the head, I, it really stands out. It looks exactly how it does within the comic books. But where it starts to get interesting is the torso. I love how they put the skull there and they got the, the bullets along the utility belt and it makes up the skull teeth. It's very, very small detail, but it's represented very well. Same thing with the bottom. A lot going on here. They got grenades, they got bullets, they got really thinly layered um, bandolier on both sides. Overall, just tons happening right there. Let's take the gun out of his hand. Looking at the sides, he's got that sweet printing right there, really fine. And if you can see there, there's a skull in the middle of that, and it goes all the way down. The teeth like extend all the way down 
to the hand and there's a star behind it. Really great look. I love the back printing as well. Same thing on the other side. Overall fantastic and I love how they gave him this giant sniper rifle. Looks great. Overall great character. Time for a few shout outs. Allison Thompson, Tunes with Dan, and Noah Films. Huge thumbs up goes out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching Toy Gander. And now guys, it's that time of the video. There's one figure somewhere on the screen that's just not quite right. The first three subscribers that find out which character is incorrect and puts it in the comments below, I will give you a shout out in the next Saturday video. Guys, I want to thank you so much. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button and subscribe. And until next time, you can help us take a gander. <laughs>